Hey influencers, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I do have my laptop here. I wanted to do a Q&A, YouTube Q&A, in reference to a question that I got. One thing I want to do is start looking at some of these questions that you guys are asking and getting as much information as I can for you all about these questions that you had. I thought it was interesting to read and wanted to share it with you all so that you're fully aware. My computer just went down, which it shouldn't have. I think my battery, so let me grab my cord. Guys, one second. All right, y'all, my bad. Now, my cord, my computer, I hope I can get everything back but it just somehow happened to shut off when I was trying to do this video. So I'm gonna get it up and set up. Let's see. I have to log back in. Okay, so while my computer is loading, so this question was asked and I thought it was good to share. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that's okay. And I wanted to read the question verbatim. It's going to be a little bit of a English typo in here, but I'm going to break it down because I could understand clearly what she was trying to say. And I'm going to try to answer this question to the best of my ability. Let's talk about it. Let's conversate down below. This was asked on the video that says, are you considering health information management? Watch this. That particular video, there was a question that was asked. It was a little bit longer than I thought, but then again, I welcome all questions. Thank you so much for commenting, whoever you are. And thank you so much for the question. So the question says, hi just came across your channel i have been binge watching slash listening your videos last few days so listening to your videos the last few days so just the fact that she said she came across my channel and she has been binge watching it's a blessing for me it is music to my ears i am so happy i am so proud of myself to have someone say they're binge watching i know when i watch youtube videos binge watching some of these videos for me especially when it's something that is educational things that i can learn from and just various different people on youtube that i love what they do even people doing home decor makeup sometimes i can binge watch some of these things and i like to show my support to a lot of youtubers some of these small youtubers binge watching their channel supporting their channel is truly important for someone to say they're binge watching my channel child i'm beyond happy about that so i really do appreciate you watching my videos watching you know things on my channel so let's keep going she says this is my first time commenting on a youtube channel now i just noticed this when she's saying it's her first time commenting on a youtube channel so my channel was the first channel that she's commenting on that is music to my ears once again. It is a blessing. I feel good. It is motivating. A lot of times people watch or binge watch. They watch channels and they don't comment. And I'm not going to um, hate on people because sometimes we will watch. And, you know, I could be watching someone's channel, cleaning, watching someone's channel, cooking and doing other things and don't have time to physically go in and type in and start answering those questions. So for me to see that someone is actually telling me that they're watching and this is the first time that they're commenting and it happens to be my channel, I'm blessed, I am humbled, and I truly appreciate it. When we see those comments, it is really motivating. So for those of you out there who are watching, when you're enjoying content or you, know, you see something and you feel like this is great and it was helpful, please comment down below. Even if you have to make one or two statement it's important because it will encourage 
that particular YouTuber to continue going. Now to continue reading, she says, I was working as an HIM professional, still holding an RHIT. So kudos on that, great job, awesome accomplishment for you to have your RHIT. That is major for me. I know how important it is to study, take these programs, pay for them, and then go study for your credentials. So kudos on that. And you will also work in an HIM professional profession and that's truly important too because not everybody can get into the field she also said not as a coder so she's been working in him she had an rhit but not as a coder not as a coder or not a coder for me that quote unquote is something for us to keep in mind because when you think about him health information management everybody's going to think all things coding hit health information technology coding i mean you name anything that has to do with health information coding 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 and that is not what him or hit is all about health informatics is all about no it's healthcare in general is working in technology working with patients and so forth and so on but a lot of people associated with coding strictly coding I guess back in the days, the evolving of HIM was almost like coding, but it's medical records. And medical records is not strictly coding. But a lot of people, if you told them, oh, I am a health information management professional, if I am a health information technology um, student, they're going to think of coding, all things coding. And I want you guys to get out of that notion that it is coding and it's strictly coding. It is broad. You guys need to go in, do your research, and you'll find out a lot of stuff about the health information management, health information technology field. So when she indicated that, I wanted to make sure that I make a point about that. Now she said, and now she's a stay-at-home mom. I can relate because I was a stay-at-home mom for quite some time. I have my background in different things, nursing, IT. Even after getting my bachelor's of science in IT, I ended up staying home due to various different reasons with my babies and went back to school and did what I need to do to accomplish my goals. Now she says while staying at home, she continued her education to get her bachelor's in HIM, health information management, and master's in health informatics. Now this is something like me, I started working eventually, got into the HIM field, and I also decided to pursue my master's after I went back to school for a second bachelor degree in HIM. So all of this I can relate, and I'm really, really, really um, someone who will commend what this young lady woman did where she's going back to school, she's a mom, she's working with her kids, and she still went back to school juggling motherhood, studenthood, and still doing her bachelor's and her master's. So kudos on that. That's extremely important. I can relate and, you know, more power to you. I mean, we women, we are really strong and we can do it. So um, it's encouraging for other people to read and see this. And I really want to point it out that you can do it because I've done it. And as you can see, somebody else has done it as well. Also, she says, I am accelerating from a bachelor's, a BS in HIM to a MHI. So that right there is something that I also wanted to point out. When people say in a BS, there is bachelor's of arts and bachelor's of science. That's another conversation on its own. People get a little bit worked up when I do ask the question of, do you have a bachelor's of science? or do you have a bachelor's of arts? This is important because they are not the same. Comment down below if you agree with me or disagree with me. You're fine to disagree with me, I don't mind. Let's get the conversation going. But there is a difference between a bachelor's of science and a bachelor's of arts. I know in my first degree program, my IT major, if you did a bachelor's of arts, in IT and a bachelor's of science in IT, your core courses or your general courses might be somewhat similar, but some of those general courses are not always going to be the same. You may have to take a higher level math, 
some higher level science because now it's a bachelor's of science. And then when you start taking your core courses, your curriculum for your program, they are going to deviate a little bit or shift a little bit because it's a bachelor's of science and a bachelor's of arts. They are not the same. I've debated this with others and let's get the conversation going about that because I do not know of where I have seen a bachelor's of arts program and science program in the same exact major have the same exact courses. Usually one is more lightweight than the other. The requirements are going to be slightly different because it is science and the other one is arts. That's a differentiation. So um, her saying that she has her bachelor's of science in HIM also something that I did. So I can relate to that and kudos on that and her master's in health informatics. So she said, I am two semesters away in completing my bachelor's and starting my master's next month. And I feel like going from your bachelor's and then to your master's, that's not something easy to do. If you have the opportunity to do it, do it. There are lots of organizations that are gonna pay for you to go to school, lots of organizations that are going to pay for your credentials. You just have to investigate on that. Now, let me know if you want me to do a video on that to kind of educate you guys on those kind of things. But those are things you should be researching and thinking about. So for her, going back to back to school, I would say if you can do it, do it. Do it, sit on it if you have to. You don't have to wait until you land that job or wait until you think that, okay, I'm now ready because sometimes when you're ready, life happens. So if you have the opportunity, you have a supportive spouse, you have the finances, do what you gotta do because that's what I did. So for her, that's what she wants to do. From her bachelor's of science, she's going to go into her master's next month. So congratulations on that. Keep your education going. I mean, I love the fact that you're doing what you need to do and I'm going to keep you in prayers, whoever you are. And um, awesome job about that. So she said, this is the first time I came across the health informatics administration. What is the difference between health informatics and health informatics administration? Then she says, I am very much interested in Epic analysts and have been, I guess that's what she meant, researching about it. So that's another topic on its own. So let me, let me go back a little bit. When she says this is the first time that she came across health informatics administration, to speak to the differentiation between both, I'm going to go ahead and try to give you a high level overview or high level definition really of each of them and then try to break it down as much as I can. So for health informatics, it relies on information technology and aids us to have the ability to organize and analyze health records to improve healthcare outcome. And this is important because we're dealing with health records. So, and we're dealing with patients and we're dealing with their care. So that's part of what health informatics is. Health has to do with our health, our caretaking needs, continuity of care. And then other things I have in here is it helps us to create health data system and processes in order to improve healthcare delivery, patient care, and population health outcome. Then it also is the integration of healthcare science, integration, compilation. It's a combination when you think about it, health informatics. It's the integration of health science, computer science, information science, and cognitive science to assist in the management of health information. So think about that. A lot of people are going to say, well, computer science, but yes, when you think about this, it is the science of healthcare. How are we using what we've learned, the data, the resources to provide health care to our patient, to treat them? And the final definition I have for health informatics is that it is the application of health information technology for health care professionals. They're the ones who use this with the aim of creating tools and procedures that facilitate the diagnosing of patients, issues, things that are happening to them health-wise, and the treatment of those patients. 
So this is what health informatics entails. That's the definition. There's so many other definitions you can look at and what it entails and all you need to know about health informatics. You can truly find these things online. So do your research as much as possible. Now the next one is the differentiation between health informatics, which I just defined, and health informatics administration. So one thing you guys wanna think about is what's the missing piece here or what is included with this new definition, health informatics administration. It is the word administration. Administration, defining it is the process of running some sort of business, the management of some sort of business or organization. So if you think about it as an activity that is being performed, you running something is also the same as you managing something, you supervising something. That's the administrative portion or the definition. Administrative is you're handling the books, the managing of that particular area or that particular content or that particular agency, whatever you want to call it, you're doing that. Now to dig deeper, for health informatics administration, it helps us to become the expert to oversee managing the complex condition of our organization's health information management needs. You're still overseeing something. It's a little bit more complex. It's not standard, it's not basic. You're trying to, as a whole, help them oversee what's going on in that particular organization. Other additional definitions is that it provides the ability to run hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, other healthcare facilities. They manage staffing, regulations, compliance, insurance, billing systems, and ensure that the facility runs smoothly for patients and practitioners. So this is what the health informatics administration is all about. So when you take that program, you're taking the course, that's what they're going to be focusing on. More of the management leadership role, just like the RHIT and the RHIA. RHIA will put you on the administrative level and the RHIT will put you on the technician level. So there is a differentiation between both. One doesn't require as much and the other one does. So you have to do more work. You have to supervise, you have to manage. You might want a leadership role and those are the different things you may want to get based on your credential. So the same rule applies with health informatics administration. It is more high level, you're managing, you're supervising, you're providing a lot of guidance. Another thing to keep in mind is that in the health informatics administration portion, you can do things like designing and implementing health informatics system. You can also deal with health information management, the policies, creating policies, taking old policies and reviewing them. I know in my role, I deal with old policies. We see what's new, what's trending, what needs to be changed what's going to better our organization. So I'm looking at those policies, we're writing them, we're creating new workflows, and then we're pulling in key stakeholders to help us and assist with making sure this policy is as current as to what's going on in our industry. So you will be doing things like that when you're talking about the administrative portion. You also are going to be designing, managing, and interpreting health classification system and the database. So things that are storing the data, things that are collecting our patient information, those systems like Epic, for instance, Data Arc, um, if you have OnBase, if you have Meditech, Cerner, these are systems that always help us in our patient documentation and storing our patient documentation. So you're dealing with helping to manage those systems, making sure that everything is streamlined and the process of collecting those data and storing them are as planned. You can deal with preparing a comprehensive healthcare finance program. So with my particular facility that we work for at this point, we do work with Revenue Cycle, for instance, and they deal with a lot when it comes with financing in our organization. One thing that I do work with is dough patient, for instance. So an example of that is a work queue that has a lot of dough patients. These are patients that could have came in 
unresponsive, a deceased patient, any type of patient that didn't give their name for various different conditions, just had to be seen. Like let's say they had an accident, they can't speak and give their information, they may be created as a doe. If you have doe patients in your system, that means you don't have a name, you don't have a next of kin, you don't have address, insurance information that does not help the organization. You may be asked to deal with a work queue where you have to identify these does. When you identify the does, that means they're given a name, maybe they have next of kin, and we're able to generate money for the hospital because now you have a name to associate and now you could build that particular patient for the services that were rendered. So that's something that you have to also think about as the administrator, you're now dealing with those kind of things, finances, what, how does the organization get revenue? We gotta make money, we have to cater to our patients, but at the same time, we still have to pay our bills, keep the hospitals going, keep the industry organization going, the agency going to be able to support and care to care for our patients and also care for the needs of our practitioners, make sure that everybody is billed as need be. And then the other thing that I did mention in here that she had stated was also about the epic interest. Um, she said, I'm very much interested in EPIC analyst, and that's important. Now, I did get my credential in EPIC due to various different things. I always volunteer my services as need be, but one thing you want to keep in mind is EPIC, sometimes we know it's hard to get into those roles. There are various different ways to get in there, and it's not always as hard as you may think. Some people think I need to have that certification, or I need to be the um, expert, someone who has gotten some sort of credential in order for you to get title that has that epic analyst behind it and that's not always true it's just doing your research and looking at organizations especially those different organizations that are already on epic or plan to be on epic so there are various different ways comment down below if you like to know ways and things that you may want to consider in order to venture into that epic arena also lots of hospital my hospital utilize epic right now so that's how i was able to do what i need to do and other things that i can talk about in another video um, i think it's important credential to obtain if you can she says i see some similarities in mine and hers which is true and i do appreciate that she asked these questions i think it's important it's going to help somebody out there who's thinking of these things. She says, your video are informative and I thank you very much for sharing your career and helpful information. So I wanted to really give her a shout out. Appreciate you asking these questions. I appreciate you watching, binge watching my channel. That's like my videos. That's the first I've heard. And so thank you so much. I am really, 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 really grateful to hear that somebody's watching it and these contents are truly blessing you guys out there and you're getting a lot of information that you found to be valuable and helpful. As always, please comment, support me, subscribe, share this with other people, students, HIM professionals, people that are trying to get into the field. Remember, it's not just HIM because it says HIM. We are HIT, we're healthcare, we're health informatics, you name it. There's a lot when it comes to the HIM industry, like AHIMA. There's so many different career paths. So this is broad. So share it with anybody that you think will find this video and this content to be helpful. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.